morning. My name is Dr. Carl Chalky, and I am the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Medical Officer of the Retina Foundation of the Southwest, a not-for-profit research organization in Dallas, Texas. This morning is the first of a series of videos where we're going to be explaining to you all how we do the research that we do to try to treat blinding conditions. This morning I'm with Abigail Christie, who is a clinical research investigator. Good morning, Abigail. Good morning. So what we're gonna do with Abigail today is she's gonna walk us through uh, the experience that a patient has when they come to our clinic and how we use cutting edge diagnostic tools to understand at what stage of the disease these patients are at, how are they progressing, and as we develop therapy for this disease, how we can monitor that. Okay, Abigail, are you gonna walk us through an experience? Yes. Great, let's get started. My name is Abigail Christie, and I'm a clinical research associate here at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. I'm honored to get to work alongside these other scientists that are conducting exciting and sight-saving research. But really, my favorite part of the job is working with my patients. Without these patients that are willing to come in and participate in not only our research, but these clinical trials, none of this will be possible. Here we are in our vision testing room. The first thing we do when you come to our office is to get a very accurate assessment of your vision using the current gold standard in ophthalmology, the eye chart. This is done at ours and at every eye care professional's office in the country. What makes us different, however, is that we do not stop there. Many of our patients, especially those with macular degeneration, inform us they have a lot of troubles seeing in low lighting conditions such as a dimly lit restaurant. We can quantify that using special filters. By putting these filters over your current glasses, we can simulate and record this change in your vision due to macular degeneration. We also have other ways of assessing your vision that our studies have shown are much more precise and repeatable. This machine here is called the Quick Contrast Sensitivity Test, or QCSF. We are currently the only site in the country that is utilizing this technology. This machine will display letters of varying levels of blurriness and, based off of your response, customize the test to your eyes. Our research has shown that this is a much more precise method of measuring your vision than the standard eye chart. By performing this test under regular lighting and with a special filter that mimics low light settings, we can get a very clear picture of your vision. Very good, yes, these are very sensitive ways and really gives us a nice way of monitoring a patient's progression as well as potentially showing improvement uh, as we initiate therapies. Abigail, do you wanna tell us where you are now and uh, what the patients will experience in this phase of their exam? Now that we have covered what we call the functional testing, how well your eye can see based on your response, we can look at your eye's anatomy. The first piece of imaging equipment is called the OCT. It is a non-invasive scan that looks at all the different layers of tissue in your retina, which is located in the back of your eye. This first picture is actually of my own retina. You can see all the various layers are clearly defined, everything is smooth, and there's a lovely dip in the middle. That dip in the middle is called your fovea, and it's a good thing. It's the very center of your vision. Now let's look at a patient with macular degeneration. The layers are less clear, but there are also these little bumps here at the bottom. These bumps are called drusen and are one of the first signs that you may be developing macular degeneration. This next picture is of a patient's eye at a later stage of macular degeneration called geographic atrophy. Geographic atrophy is the loss of tissue that allows you to see and can lead to vision loss. Geographic atrophy and how to slow down the associated vision loss is Dr. Chalky's group's main focus. The other thing that we do, which most clinics do not do is you know, image in a non-invasive way, all of the normal blood vessels in your eye and potentially any abnormal blood vessels that could have developed as a result of macular degeneration. This last machine that we are going to talk about is called the OCTA or OCT angiography. We are one of two sites in Texas and one of about a dozen in the country to have the latest and most advanced model that is currently available. This is completely non-invasive and works without injections or dyes and documents blood flow through your eye. Our goal here at the Retina Foundation is to gather more information about this new state-of-the-art camera and work out what these images mean. So tell me, Abigail, you and I have now gone through all of these images. You've walked us through all of the um, steps that the patients 
uh, have done, all of the visual function testing and imaging, and what's the final step for these patients as they see us. Now that we have all of your pictures and functional tests, I will take you to our clinic space where Dr. Chalky will perform a full eye exam. We are a site for multiple clinical trials to see if new drugs for dry macular degeneration work. At this point, Dr. Chalky will discuss any clinical trial options, including risks and benefits, that he thinks could help you and your macular degeneration based off of your pictures and functional tests. These treatment trials and all of the various testing and imaging that we do here at the foundation is free of charge. As you can see, as Abigail has shown us, um, patients with macular degeneration who come to the Retina Foundation, we give them the personalized attention, we personalize their exam, and we are able to then identify various features of their disease that are important not just for diagnosis, not just for monitoring their progression, but as we start to intervene with therapies, we can understand their response to therapies. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abigail. Thank you.